Hi everyone, welcome to this first lesson of the training on computable general equilibrium modeling. Before starting the training per se, maybe it could be good to set out a few clarifications. First, who is this training for? Well, this training is addressed to economists who have completed at least a first degree in economist or prefer preferably a second degree. This training is addressed to economists uh, working in university or students and also to economists working in the private or in the public sector such as economists in the Department of Finance of their own country. Finally, it is addressed to economists worldwide, that is uh, for economists working in developed as well as in developing countries. It also appears to me quite important to clarify what uh, this training uh, includes. So the training you're about to start includes a video such as the one you are watching right now uh, in a few lessons, it also includes uh, pedagogical material to assist the participant in its training. Most of the time, I try to put uh, as much references as possible so that the, uh, the participant who's willing to go a little bit further in his learning uh, can have uh, something to read. And finally, I have put some exercises, hands-on exercises in GAMS. Who are the authors of the training that you're about to start? Well, myself, Véronique Rubichaud. I'm an economist. I, I graduated more than 20 years ago, and since then I've been involved in the development of uh, CGE models, but as well as in trainings for uh, economists in developed countries as well as in developing countries. It wouldn't be fair not to mention the tremendous work Bernard de Calouet has uh, done over the years. Uh, his contribution to this uh, training is, uh, is uh, very huge. Uh, Bernard de Calouet is it's a professor at Laval University and has been uh, teaching CG modeling for over 20 years now. André Lemelin is a long-time collaborator for me as well and has contributed in many ways to the preparation of this training and to uh, the multiple documents that will be shared with you. André Martens is a long-time collaborator as well and is a retired professor from uh, University of Montreal. Luc Savard also contributed to the material developed for this training and he's a professor at uh, Sherbrooke University. Finally, is Hélène Maisonneuve is a long-time uh, collaborator and has contributed as well to the development of uh, part of the training. Now, uh, it, uh, I have to mention that uh, the, the, the core of this training is based on a, a book written by professors de Calouy, uh, Martens and Savard, and uh, they have uh, kindly shared with us some chapters of uh, their book. I will uh, uh, make reference to their um, book in the first lessons. What is a CGE model? That is the type of model that you will learn to build and to use through this uh, training. Well, first of all, one must keep in mind that a CGE model is not a projection tool, it's a simulation tool. It is used to compare uh, the status of the economy under some uh, general conditions and compare this uh, economy with what it would be if one or of the conditions uh, is changed. Uh, therefore, it will answer questions of the type what would happen if something changes and not what will happen. Uh, it is not a model based on statistical correlation, rather it is a model based on theoretical foundation both from the micro and macroeconomics. 
finally, in uh, CGE model, there is no money. In fact, CGE models are considered real models and therefore only relative prices matter. So more precisely, what is a CGEM? Well, M stands for model, and in, as in the case of any economic model, well, a CGE model is a mathematical representation of the economy. In a CGE model, we take into account the interdependence between the industries, as well as the interaction between the agents in the economy, and by agent we mean producers, workers, consumer, the rest of the world, and the government. In a CGE model, the impact of prices on decision-making is crucial and uh, the economy operates under the usual macroeconomic constraints. Now, GE stands for uh, General Equilibrium. Why? Well, simply because a CGE model is an application of the uh, Valras Competitive <coughs> General Equilibrium model, as we will see in the first lessons. Now, what do we mean by General Equilibrium? Well, in a CGE model, uh, the budget constraints are respected for all agents, uh, meaning that the, the, the sum of income sources is equal to the sum of uses. And this is true for each agent uh, taken uh, independently. Besides, the, uh, uh, the agents that have uh, an optimizing behavior, such as uh, maximizing utility or maximizing profits, fulfill optimum conditions. Uh, markets are in equilibrium, meaning that supply is equal to demand, and uh, equilibrium is achieved through the, uh, the role of prices. And uh, finally, macroeconomic equi equilibrium or ensued, that is, uh, that the sum of all expenditures is equal to the sum of all revenues, and as well, uh, investment spending is equal to total savings. In order to better illustrate the different linkages between the economic agents and activities, I have prepared a schema. In this schema, we can see that first the producers demand factors of production in order to uh, produce commodities uh, and services. So they rely on factors of production such as uh, labor and capital. Now, these factors belong to uh, agents, household to say something, that supply their uh, workforce on the, the labor market in order to produce the different commodities. The same goes for uh, capital supply. In exchange for, uh, for their work on the labor market, the workers do receive uh, wages, a salary, and this becomes an income for the different agents. As well, the same goes for capital. So the supply of capital on the uh, capital market uh, receives uh, money from the producing activities in exchange for their participation in the production process. The different agents uh, use this income to purchase goods and services and thus they demand the different commodities that can either be produced locally or be imported and uh, demand for the commodities that are produced locally is equal to total supply. Of course, this is a very simplified uh, schema in which uh, even the government does not appear, but at least it can show you a bit of the uh, interaction between the productive sectors, uh, the market for factors of production, the agents and uh, the, the demand and supply for the different commodities and as well as the demand and supply of uh, the different factors of production. The only letter left in the acronym for which we uh, did not uh, put a definition is C. C for computable 
meaning that in order to uh, to be able to use the model uh, and to run some simulation, uh, one need to have uh, to have it resolved numerically. And to solve a CGE model requires first a statistical base, and in the case of CG model, usually uh, economists uses uh, social accounting matrix as a statistical base. Uh, the modeler also require to have consistent parameters, and we mean by consistent parameters that the parameters used in the, the mathematical function of the model be uh, consistent with the data that is observed in the social accounting matrix. For this, uh, this reason, most of the time, parameters in CGE models are calibrated. We'll discuss this further along the training. And finally, usually models are too big to be solved numerically uh, by hand, and thus we need the computer to solve the model. And there exist a few uh, different software that, that are uh, built expressly to solve CG models, and we will be uh, using the GAMS software. The applications of a CG model are multiple. So, uh, for example, we could use the CG model to run exogenous shocks, such as uh, a variation in the world prices of given commodities, or we can even uh, simulate the impact that a natural disaster would have uh, on a given economy. The CG model can also be used to simulate structural changes such as uh, changes in the productivity of a given factor or the, the, the endowment uh, of some given uh, factor may be uh, shocked exogenously. Uh, often CG models are used to simulate economic policies be it uh, trade policies, uh, uh, economic policies related to environment or uh, fiscal uh, policies. Now, the results of a CGE model are uh, numerous and the bigger the model, so the, the more there is uh, sectors and commodities, the larger the, the result base gets. So, the CGE model will produce uh, information on the different prices and quantities per industry, so basically pr production prices, uh, the quantity produces, same thing for value added and demand for factors of production, and uh, it gives also results or impact on uh, prices and quantities per commodity, so if we're thinking about final demand, intermediate demand, demand for investment purposes, and so on. The results also look at impact of shocks on income, expenditures and savings for each agent, so for uh, households, for firms, for government, and also it uh, gives information on macroeconomic indicators such as uh, GDP, current account balance, public deficit, uh, investment, and so on. Now, uh, one must remember that this is probably the biggest challenge, is to fully understand the result of a shock. And uh, once again, the bigger the model is, uh, the more complicated it gets to follow the transmission mechanism of a given shock. So this is a part that we will be working on real hard in the coming uh, lessons. The objectives of this training is uh, to, to allow the participant to become fully operational in uh, building a CG and using it. So at the end of the training, uh, the participant should be able to build uh, his own social accounting matrix, develop the theoretical and mathematical structure of a CG model, 
I use the GAM software to uh, solve the CG model numerically and uh, uh, obviously simulate shocks and interpret the different results. The, the approach I will be using is uh, based on progressive learning. So we will start with very, very simple models and we will get to more complex ones. As I mentioned earlier, I have prepared a bunch of hands-on exercises so the participant can really participate in this training. And I have put on the website a bunch of references as well so that the participant who wishes to go a little bit further can have access to uh, more references. And finally, each lesson is uh, most of the time divided in multi multiple small videos uh, in order to be shorter and really targeted. The structure of the training follows uh, four different blocks. In the first block, we will have a look at the theoretical framework. So we will uh, have a reminder on the producer theory, the consumer theory, uh, same thing for competitive equilibrium. And we will have a look at a very simple example. This will be covered through lesson, uh, lessons two and three. In part two, we will have a closer look at the statistical base. So, as I mentioned before, the statistical base for a CGE model is a social accounting matrix. We will have a, a, a discussion as well on national accounting and uh, we will have a look at different SAMs. The part two will be covered in lesson four. Uh, following uh, the statistical base, we will get to uh, the operationalization of uh, CG models. So we will be developing three very simple models. The first one of a closed economy without government. We will then add the government and finally we will open the economy to the rest of the world. And for each model, we will build the mathematical uh, structure based on a social accounting matrix. We will program it using GAMS and we will analyze the results of different uh, simulations. This will be the core of the training and that will be covered through lessons uh, 5 to 7. The last part is really a more application part in which we will be looking at the construction of a real SAM and we will have a look at uh, models that are uh, more closer to real CG models that are used uh, worldwide and this will be done through the PEP standard models. The total program of this training is equivalent to approximately 12, uh, a 12 week semester, uh, uh, excluding um, evaluation.